Hey everyone, my name is Alicia. Welcome to another tutorial on how to perform a Kruskal Wallace test on a data set. So the data set that we're going to be doing is called Spruce and we're looking at four different treatments to see how these treatments affect the growth of spruce trees. So the first thing that we're going to do is, as always, we're going to bring in our data set. So I'm going to have Julius load in data set. So this data set is actually from the R data sets, which is a repository of all the data sets that our studio has. I'll put the chat or the uh, link in the chat below and you can browse any of them as, as you please. So we can see that we have row names tree DBH, which is diameter at breast height. It is a specific measurement that you can use to measure the growth of trees. And then we have treatment through one through four. Okay, so now that we have our data set in, let's ask Julius to bring in or look at some descriptive statistics. You probably know from watching my previous videos that I always kind of go through the same methodology as I am analyzing data. This is because I want to make sure that I am looking or getting an overall generalization or an overall understanding of my data set and looking at any potential trends. This is the reason why I'm doing descriptive statistics on the four different treatments. So as you can see, we have our descriptive statistics for treatment one, two, three, and four. We do have different sample sizes, which is okay. And it's just sometimes the nature of our data. We have our count, our mean, dbh min, dbh max, all of that. So our next thing that we're going to do is we're going to write, now go into the histogram and see if our data set is normally distributed or not. So as you can see, it does look like it's going to be non-normal non because you can see it's skewed to one way. But to confirm this, let's ask Julius to run a normality test. So after we run the normality test, which will tell us if it's non-normal or not, which is probably going to be non-normal, we're going to then run the assumptions of the specific test that we want. So this is going to be Kruskal Wallace. So I'm already getting ahead of us. Yeah. So as you can see, it's very, very, very skewed. Treatment one, p-value under 0.05, same with treatment two, treatment three, and treatment four. So we can also create a QQ plot. <laughs> so, hypothetically, we're supposed to be following this red line here. As you can see, our data points are not. So that's also another indi another indication that it's non-normal data set that we have. So now let's ask it. Can assumptions. So now we're just going to be looking at the assumptions. It outlines our assumptions very nice. So the samples are independent. For methodology purposes, we're going to say they are. The dependent variable is ordinal or continuous. Ours is Julius. Hello, Julius. Ours is continuous. So the independent variable is categorical with two or more groups. We have four. That's our treatments. And then the distributions of the groups are similar in shape, which for the most part, yes, as you can see, if we go back up, <laughs> they seem to be skewed the one way, as we know, and it's not normal. So. so this is the first time I probably showed you a violin plot. So it actually shows you the density of where the specific DBH numerical values are. So. The more broad it is here, that means more points fall into that specific area. And then you can see it has a, on the high end, you have tapered off here and here. These are our, our numeric variables that aren't as representative. So they look like they're generally in the same area. And then what we're going to do, seems the distribution of the groups are similar in shape. So this is actually a really nice way to see how they are similar in shape. So now that we know that our, our data set or our four treatments have the same or close to the same distribution of data points, we are going to be running the Kruskal-Wallis test. 
like the ANOVA, the cross skull wallus does not tell us where exactly these differences lie. So we have to do what is called a post hoc test for this as well. So we're in just a minute. So Julius probably, yeah, okay. Julius picked the Dunn's test. The guy I, I kind of figured out or figured it would. So it gave us this nice um, output here, but I'm gonna ask it just for the sake of making it easier for me to read, to put the statistically significant pairs in our, uh, just list them. So we got treatment, treatment one versus treatment three, treatment one versus treatment four, and then treatment two versus treatment three, and treatment two versus treatment four. So the next thing that we're gonna do is, we're actually, I'm going to introduce us to a new concept that is called um, compact letter display. So the reason why I'm introducing this is because the usual way that I show statistical significance is using a brackets and then the asterisks. However, if I do it with this many statistically significant pairwise comparisons, the chart gets a, a little bit crowded. So this compact letter display allows us to have a more crisp and clean look to our data set while also conveying statistical significance to the viewer. So first I'm going to ask Julius just to create a normal box plot. This brings up our data set here in treatment and the DBH. So what I'm going to tell Julius to do is add these letters in. So I'm just kind of specifying where I want this lettering to be as well because sometimes it may place it outside of the plot area. So just by having it format it where it's just above that um, high interquartile range, it should look nice. So let's see. Oh, wrong way. This is perfect. This is exactly what I want. Um, so I'm just going to increase the plot area from seven to eight so that this uh, specific treatment three is not overlapping. This letter's not overlapping with this here. I'm just very nitpicky. So Julius should have perfection. So it was able to increase it. So now that I have A, A, B, and B, and this matches what the what we found for from Dunn's pairwise comparison. So we can see treatment one versus treatment three, and treatment one versus treatment four were, four were statistically significant, and then treatment two and three, and treatment two and four. So treatment, that means that treatment one and two are the same, and that treatment three and four are the same. So that means that these two are not statistically significant from each other, and these two are not statistically significant from each other. However, treatment one and three and treatment one and four are because they have different letters, and treatment two and three and treatment two and four are. So thank you for joining me on how to perform a Crosco Wallace test on this data set. And I hope you like and subscribe for more videos.